antibiotics are, are compounds that, that slow down the growth of bacteria or, or actually kill them, and that allows our immune system to take over and, and take care of an infection. But, um, but when bacteria are no longer susceptible to those antibiotics, we call them antibiotic resistant. It's just, it's basically Darwinian evolution, but in real time. So we don't have to look back in the fossil record to see antibiotic resistance. I can actually set up an experiment in the lab and in 24 hours have antibiotic resistant bacterial populations. So this happens really fast. You know, I really think of antibiotic resistance as, as, as a cliff, right? And, and so when Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin, you know, more than 70 years ago, and then that was introduced to human medicine, we almost immediately saw resistance. So we had this, all of a sudden we had this platform for, for saving people. And with resistance, we immediately started going towards an edge to fall back off again. But a new drug was introduced, a new antibiotic. And so that, that, that cliff's edge was extended. And then each time resistance emerged, a new, a new drug would come along. And so even though we were running towards this edge, you know, it kept getting extended. But now what's happening is that the bacteria continue to become resistant, so driving us towards this edge, but no one's extending it anymore. We're not having these new drugs coming along. And so we are just running, and that, that edge is not extending any further. And eventually what's going to happen is we're going to fall off. We use 29 million pounds of antibiotics in food animal production in the United States each year, and it dwarfs what we use in human medicine. And what we know is that we're adding more antibiotics to animal feed in a single state, North Carolina, than we use in human medicine and the rest of the country put together. About 80% of those antibiotics are used non-therapeutically. You know, originally they described it for growth promotion, so to, to raise animals more efficiently. And then, and then all of a sudden, because that's become sort of an unpopular thing, now they describe almost all of it as preventative. So they're using all these antibiotics pre preventatively, you know, so they're trying to prevent diseases. So we introduce antibiotics at this low level. It doesn't kill off the bacteria, but it gives those that have a couple of mutations a selective advantage, and they start to survive, and they start to succeed and outcompete the bacteria that don't have those mutations. And then we introduce higher, higher amounts of antibiotics, and then those, those bacteria just become stronger and stronger until they're finally resistant at, uh, at what we call a clinical level, right? So they're resistant to the antibiotics at a concentration that we would give to you to fight a disease. So in other words, if we're feeding animals antibiotics or tetracycline to make them grow faster or to compensate for overcrowding, then, then when there is an actual infection, when, it's, when an animal is sick, we can't use tetracycline to treat that infection. And we have to reach higher on the shelf. We have to use the more important antibiotics, like a third generation cephalosporin. One of our last line drugs, one of our you know, last good drugs for treating infections in people, we gotta, the, the vet's got to reach up on the shelf and grab that third generation cephalosporin to treat that infection. And so that's a real, that's one of the real negative consequences that I see of this practice is that we're ruining the utility of antibiotics, not only for human medicine, but also for, for veterinary medicine. If you've designed a food animal production system that's built on the crutch of antibiotics, that you can't produce animals without having disease without this constant input of antibiotics, then that system is broken. You know, you've misengineered your system and you need to go back and start again. We have decades of evidence, clear evidence, showing that using antibiotics in food animal production creates antibiotic resistant bacteria that then spread to humans. And the classic examples are Campylobacter and Salmonella. Those are clear models that you use antibiotics, you create antibiotic resistant bacteria, and then they go on to infect people. And for anybody to say that, that there's no evidence that this happens, they're, they're in total denial or they're lying. It seems like you could take two paths. One, you could continue the status quo, using 29 million pounds of antibiotics to feed all these food animals. Um, creating drug-resistant bacteria that some may or may not be making their way to people. Or you could say, okay, let's, let's take the precautionary principle here. Let's stop using antibiotics except to treat sick animals. It is a major public health crisis, the, the emergence of these drug-resistant bacteria. And, and as I said, we're, we're really barreling towards what we call the post-antibiotic era in medicine. And, and that's a sad day for all of us because you know, as soon as, as soon as we see the emergence of these bacteria that are resistant to all of, all of the drugs that we have, you know, people are going to again start dying of bacterial infections that were easily treatable with antibiotics.
We could actually change our course a little bit if we could stop abusing antibiotics, really decrease antibiotics. We know that we could, we could slow the selection or the creation of drug-resistant strains, but that would take co cooperation from, from all countries and all sectors, right? So not just human medicine, but also food animal production and, and biotechnology, anywhere we're using antibiotics. We'd have to only use them when absolutely necessary so we don't create these drug-resistant populations. But so far, we haven't seen that, that collaboration. We haven't seen that cooperation to, to really address this public health crisis.